So the last part of our regression topic is calculate, calculating sorry, and interpreting residuals. So once we have found a regression line, we may need to know how close any particular observation is to the line. To do this, we have to find the residual. Uh, for the height, so in this example, for the height and length of foot. Uh, so here we have some height data, here we have some foot data, and here we have a point that we are looking at. So we are looking at the difference between that particular point and the value that would be given if we were to use our regression line as an estimate for that piece of data. So, to find the residual of the data, x, y, we find y, a minus y. So, remember that this is y, a, and this is the y value that we get from our regression line. So, the actual formula that we are using is to find the residual, we are using the actual value of the data minus the predicted value from the regression line. So we may also have to find the average of these figures to uh, perfect a prediction using the regression line. So if we find out something special about this piece of data, and maybe some other points have that special property too, it could help us in finding a better estimate for those x values. So here we have an example. We have a botanist is investigating whether there is a relationship between the height of tomato plants and the yield from the plants. And we have the follow following data which is recorded. First of all, we have to find the regression line. So in our calculator again, we have to type in these values. So 20, 40, 50, 90, 35. And then the yields in list 2, 19, 20, 26, 25 and 17. Remember we go to calc, reg, x, a plus bx. So the equation for our regression line is y equals a plus bx, which is going to be y equals 16.4 to 3 significant figures plus 0.106x. Then, in part B, we're told that it turns out that plants A and E are a different variety of tomato plant, and we need to find the residuals for each of these plants, and then the average residual that's given for the different type of tomato plant. So if we have a quick look back here for what the x values are, so A is 20, remember it's A and E, so these two plants we are saying are slightly different. So that's where we're starting off. So we're going to use our equation for finding the residual, actual minus predicted. So for A, the actual is 19 if I remember yeah and for E the actual is 17 the predicted we're going to get from using our regression line remember that's y equals 16.4 plus 0.106x and for A the x value is 20 and for E the predicted, we're going to have to use 35. So I've just got that data from the table. So we can put this into our normal calculator mode. Remember that we are replacing the x value with the value, uh, the x value of A and E. So for A, we'd get 16.4 plus 0.106 times 20, which gives us 18.52.
So that means that our residual, remember actual minus predicted, taking those away from each other, gives us 0 0.48. So that is our residual for A. For B, again, substituting into X, but this time we're doing 35. So coming back here, substituting 35 in for X, we get 20.11. Actual minus predicted, so 17 minus 20.11. Oops, sorry, put two, one too many ones there. There we go. Gives us minus 3.11. So that is the residual for E. So then for our average residual, if you wanted to be lazy, you could just put them into your stat mode, delete everything else that you've got in there. Type those two numbers in. And then go to calc, check that your set says list one, one, because we don't have any frequencies, and then go to one var, and that gives us an average of minus 1.315. Alternatively, you could have done 0.48 plus minus 3.11 and then done all of that divided by two because it's only two numbers and that should give you the same value. So then we're going to use our average residual from B together with the residual, the regression line, sorry, uh, to estimate the yield of a tomato plant, which is the same strain as A and E and has a height of 42 centimetres. So this time, we know that our height, our x value, is 42. So remember that we're substituting that into our equation for the regression line. So replacing our x this time with 42. So 16.4 plus 0 0.106 times 42, which gives us... 20.852 so I've done the bit where I've used my regression line however it also tells me to use my average residual from part b and what that means is that we're going to add on our average residual so we're going to have our 20.852 minus 1.315 which gives us an improved estimate of 19.537. So I would now like you to pause the video and give the now you try a go. So hopefully you've paused the video and you've given the now you try a go. Hopefully your regression line ended up being 0 0.0629 plus 0 0.563x. Then when we're calculating our residuals for A, the actual value is 38. The predicted value by putting X is 63, 68 sorry, into our equation gets us 38.3, which gives us minus 0 0.03 as our residual for A. For B, when we put in, we've got our actual value of 36. We're putting 63 into our X for our equation here. Whoops, sorry, I've missed putting my x there. Um, and that gives us a predicted value of 35.5, which gives us a residual of 0 0.05. And then when we put in for C, our actual value is 26. Our x value is 46. So putting in 46 into our regression line gets us a predicted value of 26 which gives us a residual of zero it doesn't give us an exactly zero uh, if we have a look back here uh, my actual value is 25.9609 so you might want to keep things to more significant figures there 
So our average residual, when we add those all together and divide it by how many there are, ends up being 0 0.006 recurring. Notice here, if I add those three together, I'm then dividing by three because I had three values that I was looking at this time. So again, I'm using my answer to part B along with the regression line to estimate the English score for a pupil whose math score is 50, who's in the same set as A, B and C. So they've got a math score of 50. So we're going to have Y equals 0.0629 plus 0.563 times 50. So 0.0629 plus 0.563 times 50, which gives us 28.2129. So then when we've added on, our value this time to three significant figures, the actual answer actually doesn't change. So then they might sometimes ask a part D saying, was it worth calculating the residual in this case? And the answer would probably be no, because overall it doesn't change the uh, outcome. Uh, those three pupils are actually still quite close to the regression line, even though they were in a different class. So that's it for uh, regression and correlation. It's very important to remember all the time we are wanting things to be linear. And the best way to do that is to have a look at the graph. Remember as well that you shouldn't really be using uh, regression lines to calculate or estimate values outside the range of data given. However, we can use residuals to help us to find better estimates for values uh, once when we've used our regression line. Thank you very much for listening.